हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू टू आर सीरीज ऑन राइट्स इश्यूज अब इससे पहले वाली वीडियोस में हमने ऑलरेडी राइट टू प्राइवेसी और रिफ्यूजी राइट्स के बारे में बात की है इस वीडियोस में इस वीडियो में एज यू कैन सी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द वेमेंस राइट्स इन इंडिया अब ये जो वेमेंस राइट्स का टॉपिक है इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक बिकॉज इसके बारे में ऑलरेडी प्रिलिम्स में एस में इवन मेन्स के जी पेपर्स में एक्सटेंसिवली पूछा गया है एंड ये पूछेंगे भी बिकॉज इट्स अ कोर इशू ऑफ आर सोशो पोलिटिकल लाइफ राइट सो लेट्स जम्प राइट इन कवरिंग द वेमेंस राइट्स इन इंडिया Now the topic of women's rights in India, we're going to cover in small, small subtopics. Today's first subtopic is based on women's rights through the lens of equality and non-discrimination. अब जब हम equality और non-discrimination की बात करते हैं, हमारे दिमाग में सबसे पहली जो बात आती है, वो है हमारे जो right to equality वाले जो constitutional provisions हैं, जो कि हमारे आते हैं under Article 14, Article 15 और Article 16. अब Article 14 very categorically says that the state shall not deny any person equality before law it shall not deny equality before law and equal protection of law equal protection of law so it shall not deny any person so the the constitutional provision itself right now includes everyone which obviously includes women Similarly, Article 15 says very categorically that the state shall not discriminate any person on the basis of religion, race, caste, sex, and place of birth. So, it may be categorically sex is mentioned, which means that you cannot discriminate when it comes to a, a man or a woman. right and then we have article 16 which mentions that in terms of public employment the state cannot discriminate against anyone basis religion race caste sex and place of birth so through these four uh, these three articles article 14 15 and 16 and later on we'll see that even the dpsps have provisions which say that you cannot discriminate on when it comes to any person let alone be women so this includes non discrimination against women ab is cheez ko harmoniously support hamare kuch legislative provisions karte hain unme se sabse pehla example hoga protection of human rights act ka ab protection of human rights act ke through kya aaya we got the national human rights commission and national human rights commission got the onus to protect each and every human right and each and every human right here means women's rights as well but for a much more guided focus the national commission for women's act of 1990 was created which later created the national commission for women this was to have a much more focused view towards women's rights in india we also have the indecent representation of women's prohibition act of 18 1989 because this 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 legis piece of legislation becomes even more important today in the age of digital life where deep fakes and ai generated morphed images are prevalent all over the internet so the indecent representation of women act says that indecent representation of women be it in any form of media published or advertisement or any form of media is completely prohibited it's completely prohibited right then comes the industrial disputes act as well as the equal remuneration act together these two acts have created a such a such an amazing workplace environment where no one can deny equal pay equal pay or equal wages for equal work equal work no one can deny equal pay for equal work so the equal remuneration act says equal pay for equal work or similar work cannot be denied the industrial dispute act says that equal wages women and men should be given equal wages and women should be provided with other facilities like crutch facilities feeding time facilities and isi ka jo a bigger implementation was through the maternity benefit act through the maternity benefit act now the maternity benefit act has provided uh, has provided with a lot of rules that creates the workplace environments 
on par for both men and women and one of those rules is obviously that you cannot discharge or dismiss a woman just because she's absent because of her pregnancy similarly there are provisions for leaves there are provisions for crutch facilities all coming through maternity benefit act and then isme we can also talk about companies act companies act ke bare mein baat kam ki jati hai but it again has a very significant provision which says that any listed companies whose paid up share uh, paid up capital is about 100 crore or any public company whose annual turnover is over 300 crore they need to have at least one woman director at least one woman director so you can see there's a harmony being created through these legislations and the constitutional provisions that are provided this is very important for you to understand to write a better answer as well as answer these questions when it comes in the prelims now how did these legislations come about in legislations and for improvement further improvement and amendments in these legislation there were a lot of public reports and public committees that were formed one of the first committees that was formed for this issue particularly was the committee on status of women in india 1971 ye jo committee on status of women in india tha this for the first time looked into the perspective of perspective of women from the equality point of view and inka jo recommendation tha inke jo recommendations the they were all geared towards increasing increasing participation of women increasing participation of women in all spheres of life in all spheres of life especially political decision making so the this committee our committee on, in 1971 said that this whole di- non discrimination and marginalization that of women that is happening it can only stop when there is increased participation of women in all spheres of life now later on we again had the national policy for empowerment of women in 2021 or uh, 2001 this committee again the this national policy for women of uh, empowerment of women committee reiterated the same thing that was said by the committee on status of women in 1971 that we need to increase the participation of women and then all of this got incorporated into our draft national policy of women draft national policy of women that was created in 2016 has spoken about this extensively draft national policy of women talks about how there has to be mainstreaming of women there has to be mainstreaming of women through different scre- schemes and provisions there needs to be equal participation equal participation in all spheres of life and there needs to be provisions and schemes schemes and provisions established by the legislations to facilitate this equal schemes and provision to facilitate this equal participation and there was again a report by a high level committee on status of women which went so far as to suggest that 50% of all government decision making bodies 50% seats in all government decision making bodies should be reserved for women this obviously includes parliament this will include uh, panchayats this would include any district level or ministry level bodies right so you can see these public reports when they came out they started affecting the legislation as well as the judicial pronouncements that came forward and to cover these ju- judicial pronouncements we're going to look at four landmark judgments which which defined equality for especially for women so the first landmark judgment here was the state of jammu kashmir versus sushila swane case now ye jo sushila uh, sushila swane case it's a very important case and it had a lot of bearing right before the the jammu kashmir uh, uh, the article 35a and uh, w- was evoked and uh, jammu kashmir became a union territory of india now the sushila swane case mein kya hua tha to understand it clearly you must have read in the news that people in jammu kashmir before jammu kashmir became pa- became recognized as a union territory before that uh, people needed a permanent residency certificate to own any sort of uh, property in jammu and kashmir ab isme there was a clause which said that a daughter uh, a daughter she can inherit property and only till she is unmarried right it is valid the permanent residency certificate is valid only till her 
uh, till her marriage the moment she gets married this this whole permanent residency certificates get evoked to iski wajah se kya ho raha tha when a person is getting married to another person who is outside or not a resident of the jammu kashmir uh, ba- back then the jammu kashmir state she would re- lose all her rights of inheriting her property right now this was challenged by the sushila swane case which later on led towards the judgment of repealing this whole law which which prevented the uh, women from acquiring uh, acquiring the property ab isme but isme problem kya thi even though this was a landmark judgment when it came toward came towards inheriting property and having equal rights for, of inheritance for both man and uh, a, a woman and a man uh, it did not answer certain few questions like if what happens to the older uh, public residency certificates that were not issued to women what happens to the kids of such relationships but all of this obviously in 2019 a uh, completely came apart when jammu and kashmir the special act uh, the special uh, status of jammu and kashmir was revoked and it became a union territory of india now the next landmark judgment here was the charu khurana judgment now the charu khurana judgment eh, agar case ke hisab se dekhe to this this case was I, i'll give you a brief theek hai isme kya tha charu khurana was a makeup artist and she wanted to become a pa- become part of a makeup art- artist association ab that association denied participation plus denied recognition of any female makeup artist they only recognized male makeup artists right so when charu khurana went to the supreme court with this obviously supreme court said all this is completely discriminatory and goes against the constitution goes against the constitution of india and again reinstated the fact that everyone in any field cannot be discriminated on the basis of their sex right now based on these based on the charu khurana judgments later on we get the kush kalra judgment as well as the babita punya judgment which you would remember now were the main key judgments when it came towards the employment of women in armies so the kush kalra judgment of versus union of india this was about women's participation in territorial army of india ab jo territorial army ka jo circular nikalta tha wo circular was specifically geared towards male citizens and ex male officers so obviously this got challenged in the delhi high court and delhi high court ended up overturning this whole judge, uh, this whole rule and in uh, and uh, indian women were given equal status as men when it comes to appointment of uh, them in the territorial army and this later on was expand, expanded by the supreme court when it comes to the uh, for all posts in uh, uh, in in our army in general and this was overturned by the supreme court in 2020 where women were given equal opportunity same as men to represent them to represent india in the colors of the indian army uniform so this covers this is a quick coverage of our equality and non discrimination when it comes to women's rights in india in the next video we'll be categorically talking about two things the political emp- empowerment when it comes to uh, the uh, indian women as well as their the provisions for their uh, uh, education as well as health So I'll see you in the next video where we quickly cover this topic. Thanks for watching.